Today's meal is a simple one. You're going to learn how to make this beautiful roast and that lovely brown gravy. This is bourbon braised beef roast. When I was a boy, regularly, mother would prepare a beautiful pot roast on uh, Sunday mornings. We would get up and get ready for uh, church. We would head on out, do Sunday school, do church, the whole thing, come back, you know. As a family, we did that every single week. And sometimes we went out to eat on Sundays, but most of the time we went home. And many of those times, my mother would prepare for us a pot roast with vegetables, often mashed potatoes, and always brown gravy. And it was absolutely delicious. There was some years after I had become an adult, I said to her, Mom, I really appreciate how hard you worked on Sundays and doing those pot roasts. That was, that was so kind of you. And she said, you don't get it, do you? And I'm like, what? And she said, I did that on Sundays because it was easy. And I started thinking about it and it kind of made sense to me. So I tried it out and sure enough, you know, doing a pot roast on a day when you're gonna be busy, all you have to do when you're finished cooking it is prepare your gravy, a couple of quick vegetables, and you've got dinner served. It's a simple meal. It's simply slow cooking, that's the only thing. So that's what we're gonna to prepare today. This is going to be a bourbon braised beef roast and absolutely delicious. None of the alcohol stays in. We get all of the woody characteristics of the bourbon and at the same time we end up with a pot roast and a beef gravy that's incredible. So let me show you how I like to make a beautiful bourbon braised beef roast. Let's get in the kitchen, come on. The ingredients for our beef roast today for this beautiful bourbon braised roast starts with a good cut of chuck. Folks, this is a choice cut and this is black Angus beef. Yours doesn't have to be black Angus, but I want to mention something about that label. If you see the wording black Angus on something, then that means under their regulations to use that terminology legally, the cut has to be at least choice or better. So you're either going to be getting choice or prime if you see the wording black Angus. Uh, and that's the only breed of cow, you know, that I know that holds that distinction. But those who raise that particular breed are very particular about this. So I have a choice cut here, and this is perfect. It lends itself perfectly to long cooking, and it's an absolutely delicious cut. We also are going to be using some water. Remember, this is about braising, and that's cooking slowly in liquid. So water, I have bourbon back here. Also, we're gonna use Worcestershire sauce. This is great not only for the flavor, but for the acid content that it brings to this dish. It's very important. Black pepper and salt, and these are gonna be applied liberally. Now folks, when we cook something like this, we need to cook it with a closed lid. So having the right item is going to be right for you. I'm gonna use a little Dutch oven like this. It's a perfect item for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna get my meat in there. We're gonna put in the other ingredients and get busy cooking. I have everything ready to get this cook underway. I need to get the onion prepared to go into my roast, but also all of the other ingredients are going in there right now also. I like to put the onion in there last of all, and that way it kind of goes in on top of everything else. And it's used for flavor, not so much for substance, Although there'll be some left over, but it'll be cooked down pretty soft. So I'm going to get all of these in first, and then we put the onion in there and we're up and cooking. I need to start. That's our bourbon right there. Now what about that alcohol in it? What happens to that? Well, look at it this way. You know, there's a couple of boiling temperature you have to consider here. There's the boiling temperature of alcohol, which is what, 173 degrees. Fahrenheit, that is. And then there's the boiling temperature of water, which it's got some of that in there too, and that's 212 degrees. So if you look at this the same way a still works, what comes to temperature and starts boiling first? In other words, what's the first um, vapor that's released from this? It's the alcohol. So when this starts cooking and heating up, that alcohol cooks out first. Before anything else starts vaping off, it's that alcohol. 
And so don't worry about that. It won't be in there by the time you're finished cooking. There'll be none of that left. All we're looking for is just the water that's in there that is flavored with that oak, woody oak, charred oak flavor. And that's that good flavor we're looking for both in our roast and our gravy. So that's what that gives us. Now, if you notice how much liquid's there, we need to add to it. I need my liquid to almost top my meat. Okay, so for that size roast in this particular pan, that turned out to be two cups of water and one cup of bourbon. Wasn't that cool? Always shake your Worcestershire sauce. That stuff settles. And I'm not gonna tout brands. There's one brand I like and I think it tastes better than most of the others I've ever tasted. So, what are we gonna do there? Oops, some of it's spilling, oh no. Well, I guess that's just part of the way things work, right? There we go, about three tablespoons or maybe just a little bit over. Hey, that's not a problem, is it? That Worcestershire not only gives it such flavor, it gives it this acid kick that's fantastic. So we want some salt in this also. The salt's gonna be good. You can kind of go liberal on that, but you need to keep it to the meat itself, not so much the juices there. Okay. So I've put in there maybe, what, about a teaspoon or a little more of salt? Black pepper. You know, I have never seen any other pepper grinder that kicks it out quite like this. And if you're wondering what that is, it's, I don't, I don't tout brands normally, but in this case, it's deserved. That's a William Bounds brand pepper grinder, and they are worth every dime that you spend on them. All right, we're almost there. Hey, hey, look at that. I just need to get some of that onion sliced up. There we go. Don't need those roots. The rest of this, just kind of go in top of the roast if you want, into the juices also. That's all good. It's going to do wonderful. It's all flavor. It's going to soak in and be delicious. This is about slow cooking. It's about stacking flavors. And this works like a charm. Alrighty, this is ready for the heat. Well, as you've seen, there's just not a whole lot going on there. It's a very simple thing to get this up and started. The recipe isn't complex, but it is delicious. So now it's just a matter of giving it time. And at the end, I wanna show you how to make a really, really good gravy. It's very simple to make gravy. And if you have lumps in your gravy, you're just not doing it right. Let me show you how it's pulled off and you're gonna have delicious gravy to go with this delicious roast. Now folks, I have pulled this out of the oven. It is steaming and hot and finished up. It has become fork tender and that's where I want it, nice and soft. I need to make some gravy from the drippings here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a shaker. This is a standard bar shaker. You can use a mason jar for this. I have some flour here and cold water. This is something that's important. I have to stress this. When you're gonna thicken your gravy, use cold water, not hot. If you take hot water and put it in the shaker with this and shake them together, the lid's gonna pop off and it's gonna spray you with hot flour water because this will expand quickly. So use cold water, do it that way. Don't learn that horrible lesson, okay? When you're pouring it into your uh, drippings as they're boiling, you want to stir it in with a whisk and pour in just a portion of it. It'll start thickening and you can add more as needed to thicken your gravy more. And that's all that is, is it's a thickening agent. When we're finished, if we need to add a little acid, that's the Worcestershire sauce. If I need salt, we can add that. But right now I need to pour this off into that pan and I can't do it with the meat in the way. So let's move that. Ooh, barely. <laughs> I was afraid that was going to come apart and it really is right now. See there how it's just pulling apart. So I just kind of got lucky. I anticipated worse. So I have a pan here and the thing of it is I don't want the onions or anything like that in my gravy. So I'm going to pour it off through a strainer.
my meat can go right back in here. I'll keep it nice and warm. And look what I kept out of my gravy. Isn't that nice? I need to bring my drippings to a boil. So I'll put a high flame under that. Alrighty, now this is coming to a boil. I need to place my flour right in my shaker. I'm going to pour the water right on top. And give that a good shake. There we go. And that's all it takes. Now, there's a little bit of a mess here. I'm messy today, so we won't worry about that. Looky there, through the magic of film, the mess is gone. Now, <laughs> yeah, I know it's ridiculous. Let's pour in part of the thickener and give that a bit of a stir. Now, we're going to bring that back to a boil. And I want to see how well it thickens that. And if I need to add more, I simply add more. That's all there is to this, okay? Okay, it's coming back to a boil. It's not thickening quite enough, so I'm adding in the rest. Well, our gravy is starting to thicken. It's boiling now. I'm going to add just a little bit more salt. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon. And just a little more Worcestershire sauce. Maybe a couple of teaspoons worth. That will bump that acid. I tasted that just a moment ago. It needed just a little more life to it and that will give it. Once we have this up and boiling and it has been seasoned out, give it about 15 minutes to cook, okay? Stir it occasionally and just let it do its thing because you're gonna cook off that flour flavor right here. And once that's done, your gravy is beautiful and complete and delicious. The quantity of what we use today starts with that beef. Now this recipe works well for anything from about two to four pounds of beef. If you wanna go larger, you can do that. Just increase the amount of your other ingredients. Make sure you have a pot big enough for it also. I used a roast that was 2.8 pounds of beef chuck, and that's perfect for this. On the onion, you just need a small white onion. That'll work fine. Salt, you're going to be using anywhere from a teaspoon to two teaspoons of salt, just depending on your taste. I recommend keeping it on the short side. You can always add a little more later. The black pepper, go ahead and put it on liberally. So you're going to be using up to about two tables, or excuse me, two teaspoons, not tablespoons, about two teaspoons of black pepper. Now the Worcestershire sauce, we're going to use two to three tablespoons of that, all right? So we want the Worcestershire sauce, it's important. That's that acid balance that it brings. Over here, that woody flavor, that's our bourbon, one cup of bourbon, and enough water to bring the water up to close to the top of the meat, just so a little of the meat sticks out, and then that's perfect. As it is, I have a beautiful gravy here, a beautiful roast, I just need to enjoy the thing, all right? Let's see if this is cooled enough to touch. Ooh, just barely. And this roast is very simply pulling apart. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Take this meat and just break it open a little bit. Isn't that beautiful? Ouch. Now, 
for the final and probably one of the most important pieces a beautiful lovely brown gravy to complement it perfectly there we go that is your bourbon braised beef roast yeah it's delicious oh man mm. that meat's just coming apart tender mm. Man, that gravy is delicious. Folks, it's deep. It's woody. It's fantastic tasting. It's, it's the kind of gravy you can really be proud of. So when you make this roast, the gravy you get from it is so popping good. You're really going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you do me a favor, take a look down below. Look in my uh, description box. You're going to see some links there. Take a look at my channel, of course. Take a look at my website. That's satrotter.com. It's an easy one to find. I've got my uh, photographic art for sale there. I'll be putting all of the items I have for Texas cooking today on sale there. There's gonna be some shirts, caps, recipes, things like that. That's coming soon. I'm working on that now. And folks, I look forward to doing business with you there and seeing you there. Thank you for coming here and watching this, and please enjoy your roast. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Come with me.